Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today, and welcome back. This is episode two of five on Black Holes, featuring Dr. Ian O'Neill, astrophysicist. Thanks for having me back, Trace. Of course, and if you want to find this over on iTunes, you can check the first link in the description. You can listen to this whole show, all five of the episodes, in one. It's awesome. But we were talking about general relativity yesterday. Now, general relativity comes out of special relativity. In 1905, Einstein formed this idea of special relativity, which was mm -hmm. that the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers. It sounds complicated. You don't really need to know that. It's, the more important thing was that the speed of light in a vacuum is independent of the motion of the observers around the speed of light. So that's kind of a big deal. It was a whole new framework for physics. And it also proposed concepts of space and time and how they were connected. Ten years later, in 1915, Einstein included acceleration into the theory, kind of rounding it out a little bit. And then that became the theory of general relativity, which exactly. is fairly famous. You've probably heard of it. And it affects us every single day, believe it or not. Yeah. So it, general relativity postulates that massive objects cause distortions in space-time that are felt as gravity, and it theorized that space and time were interwoven into the single continuum known as, funnily enough, space-time. Yeah. Then black holes are in general relativity. They're like mathematically part of this theory. And it's like the extreme end of the theory, right? Exactly, yeah. So basically, you can't get any more extreme than the black hole. That's pretty much the pinnacle of general relativity. And that's why this uh, black holes are so important to astrophysicists, because not only does it prove that these things actually exist, if we can actually observe them directly, I and mean, there's a lot of indirect evidence that we've mentioned before, but we can also, if we can actually look into a black hole, we can actually probe this strong gravity environment, perhaps even further exploring general relativity and perhaps uncovering some exotic stuff that may come like out of it. Stuff that we don't even know. We it's don't like even know yet. This is the, the cutting edge of physics in this, in right this now. realm right yeah, now. We okay. are in a very lucky time. Very, 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 very cool. Time. So we know general relativity exists. They call it the theory of general relativity, but we know it exists because like GPS satellites hmm. are flying so fast and they're so high up from the ground that they're supposed to be measuring that they actually have to adjust the clocks on the satellites yeah. pretty much constantly because they run at a different time than we do. Yeah, because like, they're outside of the gravitational well. Time runs different. That's crazy. Yeah, it's He's nuts. just like, oh, time runs different, you know, whatever. That well, we're doing blows it every day. my mind. And, and it's funny because we actually put these corrections into the programming. So we know that it's used. We know that yeah. this is a nature of space and time. So we know that general relativity is more than a theory, but we still, it's you know, physics, you know. Yeah, Come on. and science doesn't like making things laws. They just don't no. like doing no, it. No. It seems wrong. Yeah. But speaking of theories and speaking of physics and general relativity, eventually you come up to the edge of that. And if you step over the edge of that, you get into like quantum theory, which mm -hmm. just sounds super fancy. But yeah. quantum theory is kind of if general relativity describes us and like big stuff like stars and planets. Quantum theory describes stuff that's tiny, like smaller than atoms, like smaller than anything. Like imagine the smallest thing you can think of and then imagine the smallest <laughs> thing that thing can think of. Really small. Like it's impossibly small. And the weird thing is that our physics that we live in doesn't apply to them. Is that right? Basically, in the general relativity world, um, matter and energy and information falls into the black hole mm -hmm. with no consequence. Basically, right. we don't care what happens. Okay, and let me explain what information is, because we had a big problem figuring this out while we were putting together this episode. We, we had a debate. Yeah, so information in this, in this case is quantum information. And just like matter or energy, in quantum theory, information can also not be created or destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of moved around. And think of the information sort of like zeros and ones that make your computers work, but also completely different from that. It's not that at all. It's in the system is called qubits. It's the same as like a bit in regular theory, and it gets very, very complicated. Just know that everything, all matter, all energy, all radiation, everything contains information. Mm -hmm. And it cannot be created or destroyed just like matter. So up until recently, like you said, everything fell into black holes. General relativity didn't even care. Exactly. But then Stephen Hawking, you know, awesome physicist from the UK, he came up with the idea that um, black holes can evaporate. Now, this was a big thing because it was like, you know, 
a lot of stuff falls into a black hole. Nothing comes out. So how are they evaporating? Right. You don't want to create or destroy that information, exactly. that matter, that energy. Where, where does it go? What happens to it? Because his theory is based on quantum dynamics. And he found that these particles are coming in and out of existence. And the ones that are generated on the um, event horizon, some are ejected from the event horizon, basically taking mass away from the black hole. Right. If you're losing Which isn't mass, supposed to be possible. Well, but. no, no, it's not. And certainly in the general relativity world, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But with quantum dynamics, that does make a whole lot of sense. Oh. So information's being lost. That violates general relativity. And it basically comes out, basically this kind of covers a whole area of physics where Quantum, where quantum dynamics and general relativity just don't play nice. They, they, they just don't fit. Basically, the, the, the recipe book of the quantum world doesn't cater for gravity. Huh. It's the weirdest thing. At all? Like, no, not at all, no. It doesn't make sense. And wow. the more experiments we do at the LHC, the more proof, again, that the standard model of physics is correct. So right. how is this even working? Right. So this is when um, Hawking came up with the whole idea that um, a black hole is evaporating. And he theorizes that just beyond the event horizon of a black hole to actually cater for this evaporation, there must be some kind of firewall. In other words, this region of intense energy which would just evaporate you if you fell in. Yeah. Now, in general relativity, it predicts that if you went beyond the event horizon, an astronaut you, wouldn't feel anything. You'd right. just fall to you, his death. I mean, you, this is famously described by a number of physicists over the years. Exactly, if you yeah. go into a black hole or if you were to pass the event horizon, you won't come out of it. Yep. But you will become spaghettified, spaghettification, oh, love that word. which is such a great word. It's such <laughs> a good nerd science word and essentially means that because of the difference in gravity from your head and your feet as you got closer and closer to the black hole, and this happens so fast that you wouldn't be able to really know what was going on, mm -hmm. but you'd be stretched out and you'd get taller and taller until it was just, you know, you'd, you'd just squeezed into this line and then there'd just be atoms and then, then you, you be don't wanna, you don't want to think about that it just that sounds terrible. you would die it would be you'd die but you'd die really fast and in probably the coolest way yeah that you could die but really. that's that's what general relativity says and yeah, and but remember you don't feel it and, and it's you just but and remember you know um, uh, black holes they are formed through the ex most extreme end of general relativity. Right. But then quantum dynamics came along and said, ah, ah, no, 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 no. There's a little bit more drama than that. As you go past the event horizon, you're going to get incinerated and set. By like quantum energy just, yeah. just destroys it's just, you. So therefore, <clears throat> we've got a conflict right there. Yeah. So it's called the firewall pa paradox. It's, it's a black hole conundrum. We don't know wh which one's correct. And this is like a burning issue right now, literally a burning issue. It's a <laughs> burning issue in physics right this minute. And this has only developed over the last couple of years. Years. Hmm. Um, so, you know, they've been talking about the forefront of uh, theoretical physics, and to be honest, we're not really going to find out the answer until we either go to a black hole or at least get some really high-resolution shots of one. That is pretty awesome. Yep. I mean, we've never seen a black hole, we've never peeked inside of an event horizon, nope. but uh, Stephen Hawking says that there may be an apparent event horizon, like where hmm. these things are meeting. And that was kind of his way to play nice with yeah. general relativity, right? Like, yeah. he was saying, like, look, there's a firewall just inside of this event horizon, but you might be able to kind of see the ghost of that firwall and that they call that a not a black hole but more of a, a gray hole like yeah, you could you kind of tell it yeah. that it was there but it's, it's, it's weird and the thing is I mean this comes from really complex equations so to try and put it into words is kind of hard as we find out yeah so. we, as we <laughs> found out when we we're planning. putting this together yeah. but if you want to know more about what would happen if we see a black hole come back tomorrow because it's about to happen. It's going to be awesome. Make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus. Come find Ian and I on Twitter if you want to know more about science. Mm. You can come find me at Trace Dominguez. You can find Ian at Astro Engine. And make sure to check out yesterday's episode if you haven't already about black holes and where they came from in the first place. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. We'll see you tomorrow.